of fitness. And so we have the opportunity to uh, have a speaker to represent the Glasgow Trade Union Council. So I'm absolutely delighted um, to announce that the next speaker is a young, shining member of PCS and a delegate to Glasgow Trade Union Council, and that is Cat Catboy. Half six this morning, I'm feeling a little bit hoarse. Um, so I've got lots of benefits in it, Rick Haddens, and it was uh, one of the most incredible volunteers in my life. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, as the previous speaker was saying, we should all be really proud of ourselves today. But I'd like to say that I'm really proud to be speaking today, and that's for a few reasons. And I hope that I can say a couple of words on behalf of all the workers in the room. Um, we have chosen to stand up. Stand together and tell the government, no, we will not pay for a crisis created by the rich with our pensions. <laughs> um, I remember uh, watching the general election when uh, the, Tories, the Tories got into power. Uh, and that, something just after that that George Osborne said has really stuck with me. And he said, in order to solve the economic crisis, we all have to make sacrifices. So I'd like to point out that every single worker in this room that's given up a day's wage at the height of a recession in the middle of a pay freeze so close to Christmas is making a sacrifice. We will make to tell the government we will not stand by and watch them decimate our pensions and public services. Um, and we want to show them that we all still exist. The workers in this country still have power, even though successive prime ministers have ignored us, tried to drown us out with spin, tried to divide us, and what they're doing is more than If not to its knees, then at least back to the negotiating table. Um, another reason I'm so proud to be standing here today is as someone like I live and work in Glasgow and to be part of a city that has a strong, radical, militant and victorious history is so close to my heart. And speaking about Glasgow, and I can't go without mentioning this, Thatcher's government came for our industries, she came for our communities, and she tore us apart. Now her legacy lingers on in the brutal life expectancy rates in this city and in other parts of the land. <laughs> and there are men and women in this city who will not live to see that pension. This isn't a big society. This is a rigged society. It's rigged in favour of millionaires and damaged, privately educated with their true gold plated pensions. Now, I don't want to sound too realistic because Glasgow and Scotland and the UK, we've won struggles before. Our city's seen struggle, it's seen strife, and it's also seen strikes. This is the biggest since 1926, and I think it's important to remember that we can win. Yeah. I also think it's really important to know your history and to know where you came from, and it got me thinking about where I come from and why I'm here today. Um, and my granddad was a, he was a steel worker from Coke Bridge. Yes. <laughs> and uh, he retired early on on health grounds. Um, on a pension that was like, by no means large. To see that pension, that was the main source of income in the household. That was the security that allowed my dad to go to university and become a teacher. And I think that's, that is the core of this pension. Thank you. 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 Thank because that's what it's really about. That we can provide a decent standard of living for people in old age. That we provide bright futures for young people. That if you invest in good pensions for workers now, you reap the benefits in the future. I'm so proud to be asked to speak today. As a young person, a young trade unionist, 
and the young people have been demonized by the press, demoralized by the growing lack of opportunities, and degraded by cuts to their education and their services. Workers. We've been demonised as lazy and bloated in the press, demoralised by our pay freeze, and degraded by a government coming after our pensions. Well now, we're starting to fight back. Our public services lie at the heart of our community. Something like education was once a gift from one generation to another. But now it's becoming a commodity where how much you have in the bank determines how far you go. Well, I'd suggest we can say education is a Our fight is their fight and vice versa. It's a fight for opportunities, fairness in both the public and private sector, and a fight for the alternative to cuts. And well, I said it's important to know where you come from. I also think it's really important to know where you're going. Um, this show of unity today it builds our strength and confidence and it starts to expand our struggle. Marcy Walker, um, General Secretary of PCS, told his audience on Monday. Um, that two weeks today, the unions and the TUC will meet to discuss the next steps, so we must be prepared for whatever is to come. Now, I'll finish on this. It was the long, hard struggle of workers that won the right to cap working hours, employment laws and protection, fair wages and pension. People like Francis Maud, Danny Alexander, George Osborne and Cameron want to rob us of these rights. Today we are here together, joined by millions across the UK, and at every picket line, like the ones that are coming up on pictures here, there are service providers, service users, students, community activists, families, all standing united. Today we are the millions versus the millionaires. We won't be divided and we won't be defeated. Today we stand defiant.